Hey guys, it's Lula, Leave the Go Gamers. Uh, and welcome to another Aphibus Tavern. Now, as probably expected, thanks to the last video I did on the monthly update, uh, we got a lot to go over today. As you could probably tell, we got I got two regular CFEs video. Uh, two regular CFEs pages up from the uh, actual CFEs game website and two uh, YouTube videos up. So, uh, first of all, we're going to go over the developer update for Black Lux, which is out today, uh, or soon. Uh, then we're going to go and take a look at. No, it's actually out now. It's Black Lux updates out today. Okay. Thank you, Lola. Uh, it is out today. Uh, then we're going to yeah, go. Yeah, as of. I I think it was, uh, let me check my records, uh, for PC players, I don't know about you Xbox players, uh, g give me a moment here, uh, it shouldn't take long for the update, it, it's pretty big, but it's not that big, uh, let me see, uh, so I could give you a rough time estimate, um, I'd say around... Hang on, let me check their Twitter. Uh, store's not helping me much. My apologies. Take your time. I uh, while you get that up, I can just tell, tell them what we're gonna do. Do so. First yeah. thing, we're gonna look at the developer update, obviously. Then we're gonna go to the game page that they have for Black Lalex. Then we're gonna look at the patch note for Black Lalex. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at the content update video. And then obviously, the usual, usual. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't have it. Give me a moment. All right. Let's see. Okay. Uh, five hours ago from this recording. It's 326 right now, so you come back. Um, it was about 11 in the morning for me. So, yeah, it should have rolled out to both systems, but um, don't quote me on that because Xbox and PC. Then again, I'm I'm quoting off their Twitter on when they posted it because uh, so this is official source that five hours ago from this recording, it they came back up with the update. Yeah. For download. Yeah, so it should be available to download now. now. Again, don't quote us. We're just going off of the Twitter. But I'm more than positive that it's up. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so without further ado, since we have a lot to go over today, uh, are you ready to get started? Uh, yes, I am. Um... Excuse me, I'm just going over stuff. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Meh. Not too important stuff. Alright, now, now I'm ready. Alright, let's do this. Hello everyone, Joe Neat, Sea of Thieves executive producer here with another weekly dev update. So obviously I wanted to talk a little bit about Dark Relics, which is our new monthly update that's out today. But firstly I just wanted to hit a little bit around the monthly update's process and approach itself. So the plan for our monthly updates is for us to deliver these on the second Wednesday of every month. So obviously today we've released it on the second Wednesday, which is the 14th. Uh, and then as we look to okay. September... Okay, okay, everybody mark your calendars for every single rest of the fucking year. Year in, like... I'd say at least one year, because yeah. uh, that's how long they were able to stay on schedule before all that legitimate stuff happened. They had rhythm, and then they, you know, cut off. So I'd say for at least six months, uh, mark that kind of date on your calendars. Yeah, yeah, I would do. So second Wednesday of every month, so... Oh, that is something to keep in mind. Now, that's not always going to be the 14th. Because obviously month month and dates 
week, month into weeks. You get the picture. But, yeah, uh, second Wednesday of every single month, month is something to keep in mind. So, uh, yeah. That means that the next update will be coming on the 11th of September. So, you know, we want to get into a rhythm where people know kind of what to expect from us. Because so there's a regular cadence of releases. You know once a release comes out that if there's anything time-limited, like rewards that you can kind of earn during that time, uh, that you've got this certain amount of time to, to go and get them. And that there is going to be something new, something different, something interesting to look forward to uh, in a month's time. So, so yeah, that's really the rhythm that we're, that we're kind of looking to get into within the team um, and ultimately for our players with the releases that we're doing. So with that in mind, I'm going to go on and talk about what's coming as part of our Dark Relics update. The voyages, commendations and rewards around Dark Relics are all time limited for the next month. So if you want to partake in the, the specific activities related to the Dark Relics, then you know, you've got until the September the 11th to go out and achieve these and earn those rewards. Alongside the Dark Relic voyages, there's also a bunch... Uh, make a mark on your calendar, guys. You have until September 11th, 11th to um, uh, to get this all done. To put that in perspective, uh, around September 15th, 15th is going to be the release of Spiral Reignited Trilogy for Nintendo Switch. So right, and and back to what they just just said. Second one save every month. What we just said, guys. So um, if that counters that, then you're pretty much good to go. You have that already marked. Yeah. But just probably you repeat it one more time just in case. I'll try to set a, mar a marker for you guys if there's any ga big games coming out, so that way you can remember it, remember it amongst your feeds too. So, yeah. But anyways, continuing of other stuff that's coming in with this. So firstly, we're bringing something called the Reaper's Chest, uh, which is a new mechanic, uh, and you're going to see these out in the world now, and the way that these will kind of appear to you is you'll see these pillars of light kind of on the horizon, and that's when you know there's like a, a Reaper's Chest available in the world. So anybody obviously in your, in your world will be able to see that, and there's a chance that they're going to go and try and get this, but once somebody collects the Reaper's Chest, the kind of pillar of light will disappear. It will, and you can kind of take that. You can put it on your boat. But now, on everybody else's ships maps, you'll be able to see uh, this Reaper's chest and its location. So, if people want to kind of try and steal this off you, they're going to be able to see where you are in the world. So, it's quite a kind of dangerous thing to go after, and again, trying to drive interesting uh, social interactions. But this is okay, guys. So that is that is kind of like the actual Reaper's flag. If you pick up this chest. Well, you're basically a target. Target for treasure. <laughs> and you know what? This uh, kind of intrigues me because um, I'm sure you don't watch uh, any of the big YouTubers like I do. Um, Hitbox had somewhat of a similar idea to this where you'd sink so many ships and there would be... A chest that eventually pop up, but no, this actually jumps straight into the chest bar without sinking anybody. And uh, actually, so he got almost got it right, just not the sink part, but he definitely got the chest part right for sure. That chest would show up, and then, well, you basically be a target for treasure. So, like I said, if you pick up, uh, if you pick this up, don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> hey, the good part is, here's the good part though. It's a good in-between thing for skull forts and fleets. But here's my question. Is there a despawn timer? That's, that's my question. That's true. Now, for those who don't know, no, certain things despawn after quite a bit of time. So, uh... Yes, uh... Fleets, I believe it's an hour. Um, forts, it's like 20 minutes. I believe, and then um, in between each event, it's another toy miss, uh, depending on where we are in the cycle. Um, so this is a, is a good activity for someone who is, you know, kind of waiting for a fort or something to pop up for them. Exactly. So it's a good in-between activity, but like, like uh, Laura said, what is the what's the despawn timer? Because we don't know how long long it could stay there for. For all we know, it could be as long as a regular treasure chest would. Yeah, yeah, really. And and like they said, beam of light. So that's 
similar to a skull cloud, so you would think um, it would be like a fort. Maybe it could disappear appear, um, just as long as either fleet or fort. Yeah, so just something to keep in mind, guys. Guys, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, we'll get down to the bomb science of this. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're always on it. Oh, yeah. All right, continuing. Something that you can take back, and if you now go and sell the Reaper's Chest to Duke, uh, you will get doubloons for that. So it's a way to kind of emergently earn doubloons out in the world, um, but in a risky kind of way. So a really cool kind of new mechanic. Uh, and there are some kind of commendations uh, and a title that you can earn around this, but those, so this feature and those commendations and title uh, aren't time limited, so they're staying uh, in the world and, and as part of Sea of Thieves beyond this update. Alongside that, a really fun new. Okay, so uh, it looks like this sleeper chest will be definitely permanent uh, part of CPs. So. Yes. Yes. Um, you'll hear it uh, later on in the update, uh, but there's one other item that it it's rare, but it's permanent part of the game. So. Yeah. That Joe will get to. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just so you get clear, because there wasn't some clarification la last time, just so we're clear, the Reaper's Chest is a permanent part of CFEs for this update. Permanent. Completely. Just before I make that clear. The titles and the cosmetics and all that, time limited like always. So, just thought we make that clear. new um, twist on the rowboat is coming into this. So there's now a chance of randomly kind of encountering in the world a harpoon rowboat. So alongside the standard rowboats that already exist in Sea of Thieves, um, like some of them will be mounted with a harpoon that you can now use to kind of get up to all sorts of fun. So, you know, so there's a real you know, a chance now of when you're out on your adventures of seeing those. So if you do spot one, that's super high value, so make sure you grab it and attach it to the back of your ship. So alongside that, we've also shipping the hit detection improvements that we've been working on for quite a while. So for both swords and gunplay, we expect to see much improved uh, kind of hit detection across the network. So we're going to be looking out again for feedback and um, from, our, from our players around this. Insider testing has gone very well. So really, really kind of excited to see how that improves the experience out in the wild. So we've also made some improvement to the barrels of plenty. So kind of the resource barrels that you can encounter floating out in the sea, there's now a chance of encountering various types of treasure within this. So, you know, much more incentive to slow down and kind of have a look and see what's there because there might be some valuable things just floating in the sea. But there's also a chance of encountering explosive barrels floating within them too. So, you know, just be careful when you're sailing through just the, the kind of um, little kind of pool of barrels out in the sea because there's a chance there might be an explosive surprise but also something you can use maybe if you're being chased by another ship so, so you know just some real fun that we're adding there just in terms of improving the um, the resource barrels out in the world okay so let's talk about that at you uh, next so uh, basically now in addition to the regular low boats like he, Joe said said in the world you can now find um, uh, harpooned robots, harpoon yeah. equipped robots. Um, and uh, um, I'm sure with what Joe just said, uh, they are going to be a luxury guy, so you know, keep an eye out. Yeah, yeah, if you find a robot, a robot like that, that then, um, yeah, yeah, so trade that normal robot in for. And there, unless you can have two rowboats at this point, I mean, what's the harm in that? I mean, you can drag the harpoon rowboat on the back of your boat, hopefully no, hoping and praying that it doesn't detach, um, and you can have your normal rowboat docked on the side. Yeah, that's a good qu question. Probably have to look at the patch notes for that, but... Uh... If we can't add two rowboats, that would actually be a good thing. If not, then something to recommend to we have maybe having two rowboats, because either way, harpoon or not, that, it's always a convenience to have two rowboats. Well, I'm not saying that, MC. It's just um, you look at the science of harpoons at the moment and how they work. Uh, so you think about the weight of the ships, right, and how they bounce that out. Yeah. Well... Rowboats are even lighter, so you think, okay, well, I can easily drag around my rowboat like this. Heck yeah, that was the intention. I mean, you clearly look at the, the content 
update trailer for this thing that we're going to show later. And it clearly points out, yes, you can drag this thing behind you. I see. Well, we'll have to take a look at the content later and see what it's like, but yeah. Uh, okay, so let's cont uh And also, he also said that now that the ba resource barrels that you found in the world out in the water, they have treasure in them. But also barrels, so watch what button you press. <laughs> because you could be in for an explosive surprise. Not very pleasant one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't clarify which barrels, uh, so, again, just watch. Yeah, well, you just watch and be careful. Yeah, yeah, normally you can, uh, roll right over them, but now it's just, like, a little yeah, uncharted it, territory. <laughs> yeah, for all, and as we know, for all you know, you press one long button or even grace it, grace it badly, and that thing goes off like a cannon. Anyways, continuing. We've also made a, a range of kind of improvements on the game balancing side again. So a lot of this centered around skeletons. So our little friends, the gunpowder skellies, are a little bit scarcer now on, on islands, but there's also a chance of encountering um, a stronghold. Thank the Lord! So one that's a little bit more explosive. So that, that should... Yeah, those gun skellies can be a, ugh, a pain in the rear. Yes, oh my God! When did they get this fucking message that they... Sorry, I swore, but still, when did they get the message? Seriously, there is some things like that in this update that they need to get the message earlier about it. They need it. Yeah, the Gunpowder Skellies were one of the more important ones, but seriously, finally there. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a more serious one. You'll hear about it. Trust me. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, yeah, but either way, thank you there. Please. Yeah. Could you have released that earlier, though? Thank you. Along with that one other thing you're about to mention. Oh, uh, boy. I have a feeling I might know, no, but we'll see fun so you know when when you see these little guys pop up out the ground make sure uh, you look what barrel they're holding before you shoot them because um, yeah that, that could be some fun but we've also just just made some improvements so emergent skeletons as a whole are slightly less when you're just kind of exploring islands um, and we've made some real tweaks to them at the higher level for some of the higher kind of ranked um, quests but all of that detail is, is oh my bonus. god uh, we've also made a, a slight tweak to when you're sailing the sloop around in storms, just in terms of the damage that it takes and things. So Pause just kind that. Of tune that down slightly. Pause right. that. Pause that. Did you hear what he said about the gunpowder skeletons? Stronghold chance skeletons for higher ups. That includes me. Ooh. Uh. Are you? <laughs> uh, well, I'm talking about power lessons in general. That's why I'm pointing at me. So. Oh, that's right. I, I forgot. Yeah, I feel bad for the pilot legends. Yeah. I, oh, not just that. It's going to be normal players at a certain level point, too. Remember? You got you promote the voyages. Oh. You that, know? Oh, that ladder. So, yeah, it's going to be you guys at some point. Yeah, it will be yeah. us at some point, but yeah, for, well, when they say high ups, most likely they'll all be referring to the pilot legends because they're the ones that are really high. Yeah, they're referring to us, sorry, but <clears throat> um, if they say higher ups, uh, what I consider uh, starting to be a high level, it would be like, uh, I want to say, uh, 25 or 30, 30 at least, uh, that would be considered high levels. Yeah, I would, 
Yeah, I would consider 25 or 30 to be a high level because but on the lower levels, levels the skeletons get a little harder, but nothing I can't handle. But about 25, 30, yeah, they get a lot harder than a uh, hard, harder gang, so... Gee, get ready for stronger strongholds! <laughs> Yeah, but I wonder about forts now, how that's going to go. Oh, I don't want to think about forts. Shoulda, shoulda. Yeah, really. But, so, you got to think about how forts are right now, and how would they compensate a high-level player versus a low-level player for forts? I mean, everything is preset for the skeletons, aren't they? So, if, like, let's say if they are preset, how would that even be fair for the balancing system that they have, you know? That's true. That's a true and good question. Question, uh, Lola. I'm not sure, sure but you Yeah, I but then again, if they are randomized, then you have to compensate for how many people uh, party-wise are at the fort. Uh, both crew and ships, you know, because, again, high level, low level. Um, so, if, even if they do randomize them, uh, there's going to be some issues at these forts. Yeah, there are going to be a couple, uh, there are going to be a couple of issues, but you and I will check it out soon, soon. Uh, anyways, continuing on with this update, we're almost done with this video, by the way, I'm gang. that's not less punishing. We've also made some changes to the controller dead zones as well. That you, so there are new settings available for you to go in and kind of tweak just to really fine tune um, just your control uh, on the sticks itself. So I don't really understand how these work, but I think we've made some knowledge based articles so you can go and read them if you really want to get into the details. Um, but it just, as far as I can understand, it makes it easier for you to control and shoot people. We've also added some uh, more options to how you mute people. So you can now mute individuals alongside the options to kind of mute all other players. So much more control. Another long-awaited update. Uh, so you can really kind of find the Yeah, not that, not that we not that we went into. But but here's the thing though, they made arena only. That's the bad part. Yeah, how do you know that? Um, patch, patch notes. Yeah, come on. Come on, yeah. Yeah, seriously? Oh, well. Yeah, I've encountered people that are just as salty as in arena out in adventure mode. I'm not kidding you. Uh, I think they didn't get the, the complete message yet. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well. One step yeah, forward. Uh, like, like, really? Like, this way I say about these updates, like, this is the first time I've seen them starting to lag behind on their PR, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I know, look at it this way. At least they know that there's toxic play players. But they yeah. Know it, it yeah, been but they think it occurs in arena. They don't think that that's bad enough in adventure to do it. Oh, it's bad in adventure. Must yeah. Just, uh, just must not be doubtfully terrible. Uh, you gotta remember, competitive scene usually tends to be worse. But, hey, toxic, play, pl toxic players are toxic players, so if you could do me a uh, favor there and do it, uh, get it done by September, that'd be great. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, do us both a favor. We're going be streaming. We don't need bad words for a family, fam family uh, friendly stream, really. No, Ugh. no kidding. Uh, anyways, continuing. Experience in terms of who you can hear, who you can't uh, in, the, in the arena kind of sessions themselves. So something we've talked about for a while as well is now we've got the ability to kind of replace game attacks. So, you know, if you don't want to see other people's game attacks Again, in your session, uh, there's, there's this replace game attacks option. Lagging behind on your PR rare. Kind of fun game attacks that we've made up. Uh, and you can also hide your own cruise game attacks as well. So for people that are out there and kind of streaming or showing off the game um, and don't want to have their game attacks or, or the game attacks of other people they're playing with displayed, those options now exist for you in the same. 
So there's a range of other fixes and improvements in the build itself, but that's the kind of core that's coming as uh, part of Dark Relics. Uh, so yeah, go and check that out today. So we've also made some changes to the arena matchmaking flow. So what we're doing there is prioritizing when you go into arena matchmaking that it All puts right, you into a tavern. All right, let's stop right there but... from... Hi. Oh, hey, Jade. Oh, you're... Recording, yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry, guys, that's Jade. What was it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, anyway, what I was about to say, another thing that they added way too late into the game. Like, remember way back when they add, started to add these streaming tools where you can hide gamer tags? Yeah. Like, like this should this should have been a thing along with it, you know? Yes, exactly, Jade, exactly. Beginning of the game. No kidding. Should have been that, that day one, but uh, hey, it, it works on multiple projects. Projects of multiple staff, probably a stretch of thing. <laughs> still, still, it should have been at least when they started to uh, care about that part of CFP. It's like that should have been like two or three months ago. Yeah, yeah. See, like, and did you hear what they said? Hide your own crew scammer tags and randomize them. Own crew. We finally, we finally, finally, finally get that. About time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to add our own crew too. Didn't you fucking get that rare? Jeez. <clears throat> Lola. So Sorry. Language. So Sorry, I'm just still a little salty from last night. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, in case you guys don't know why I'm so sorry today, it's just um, I got robbed. My commendation, last commendation got robbed from me just when we were about to turn in the last of the required items into an app post. <laughs> yeah, okay, that explains why you're so salty. <laughs> don't blame you. Uh, that would probably ha happen to me too. Too. Yeah, so much that uh, uh, one of my new friends I made um, was kind enough to send a rant letter to them. Because he was uh, kind of upset for me too. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, anyways, ways. Uh, so yeah, seriously, there. Pick it up here. Yeah, yeah, that uh, the next couple fixes that we kind of need in the game better be by, there by the next patch, or else, else I might qu start to question question how much you prioritize. <sighs> you know, start of the session rather than into an in progress uh, arena session. So it should ensure that sessions start quicker, and also that as a player. Like you're going in at the start of the session rather than kind of part way through when maybe you don't have as much control over affecting the experience. Moving on from Dark Relics, obviously Gamescom uh, is coming up in Germany next week and we're going to have a bunch of the team out there. Uh, we're also going to have Sea of Thieves playable on the show floor with the arena. Um, but in a, in a twist, we're going to have duo sloops available for people to play. So really looking forward to kind of getting this out to play an event like this for the first time. Really great opportunity for it to observe people playing, to take feedback from everybody. But we're going to be having some fun. So each day we're going to be kind of observing and running a little competition. And the best crews each day, uh, there's a chance for them to win some really cool CFDs swag. So yeah, re really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to seeing that out in the wild. Um, and I'll definitely be playing and, and competing against people too because... I'm overly competitive. So that's it for me this week. Uh, if you're going to be out at Gamescom next week, make sure you pop by and say hello. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you on the seas. Cheers. Now, for those who don't know, Gamescom is basically the UK's version of E3. And we've got quite a bo boatload of announcements. Sadly, not amongst the those who are announcing stuff. Microsoft is sadly not amongst them. So nothing right. to... Oh, by the way, uh, MC, uh, I got a hidden update about, about uh, Karen uh, from someone just now. I just got a tip. So, um, if you don't mind me. Uh, okay, so guys, uh, you know how they said that they rebalanced the Kraken? Well, guess what? She's broken. Again.
Um, yeah, yeah. New Jersey King from Discord says uh, that they they updated the Kraken. Uh, that they kicked they kicked him and his crew run in, in a break team like hardcore. Uh, wrapped us multiple times, and there's a new animation where the Kraken just lays her tentacle head on the ship, kind of like a wrap, but not fully wrapped, just like resting there on the ship. End quote. Oh, boy. Oh, well, and, uh, uh, that's what bouncing's for. One thing, oh, once you bounce one thing, another okay, thing. Okay, so. Ring that, um, now that I get to fully read it, uh, doesn't sound broken, but, you know, just that one new element needs re rebalanced. Yeah. Just in case, yeah. Like a small thing. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, so that's what, uh, so that was, uh, CP, uh, anyways, like I said, uh, GamesCon, if you're headed out there in the UK, um, be sure to send some pictures over, over to us, because we would love to see how you guys are doing. Uh, like I said, Microsoft's sadly not going to be announcing something there, but that's okay, because we still have XO19 coming up, uh, up, and more than likely, Lair's going to be there with new CFE's information, so I'm not going to be, be too upset. Still would be nice to get, uh, like, a small announcement, though. Yes. Um, okay, shall we uh, show off the content update video? Sure thing. Okay, so this is the content update video. It's about three minutes long, long, so, yeah. Grab your cutlass and rally your crew, because the new monthly update to Sea of Thieves is here. There's mysterious treasure to uncover and skulls to be claimed. As you set sail and search of the dark relics. A nefarious crew of skeletons have stolen a set of powerful artifacts known as Dark Relics from the Order of Souls, and it's up to you to bring them back. They've enlisted the help of Duke to dish out the info on the whereabouts of these bone headed bad guys, so head to the tavern to receive a tip off on where your bounty is hiding. There are three voyages to choose from that'll take you across the wilds the Shores of Plenty, and the Ancient Isles, where you'll find part of the set of five dark relics. Plus, there's a voyage into the Devil's Roar that's exclusive to Pirate Legends, where the increased difficulty will see you rewarded with even more dark relics. The Order have seen visions of strange rituals being performed, so time is of the essence to hunt down and dispatch these skeleton crews and find the Dark Relics and the other items involved in their sordid rituals before it's too late. You can earn gold and reputation from the Order of Souls by returning Dark Relics and Ritual Skulls to their care. And if you're Pirate Legend and looking to improve your standing with Athena's fortune, the mysterious stranger will take the Ritual Skulls off your hands too. Completing the voyages and the various commendations will unlock new titles and ship cosmetics, including the mercenary cannons, wheel, and capstan. But dark relic rituals aren't the only things troubling the waters of the Sea of Thieves. Ships carrying a cargo of a new chest that bears the Reaper's mark are being sunk across the various regions. These mysterious chests contain a powerful energy that allows all crews to see them no matter where on the sea they may be. You can find them on your ship's map, or simply look to the horizon and search for their strange beams of swirling light. If you manage to secure one of these chests, take it back to Duke and he'll give you doubloons in exchange. And it seems the shipwrights have decided to indulge in a bit of thrill-seeking pirate wish fulfillment as they've started kitting out rowboats with harpoon guns. Safe? Probably not. But fun? Definitely. And there's even more changing on the seas, including arena matchmaking improvements, upgraded hit registration, new controller settings, and more. For the full release notes, head to seaofthieves.com. So get ready to head out on the hunt to uncover the mystery of Dark Relics. And that was the content update video. Ah. Uh. Okay, so, um, in fact, MC, do we even, let's, uh, just let our other video do all the talking 
that one I showed you earlier. Ah, okay. Sounds good. Yeah, because there's a, actually a hand connection that people need to know if they're into lore. Uh, oh, you want me to get that video up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, we got one more video, video guys, and then we'll get into the uh, uh, actual uh, edit stuff. Laura sent me a video in DMs. I just got to pull it up here. Yeah, it's very interesting, guys. Um, it's worth a watch. Of course, though, if you're not into the lore, you can s skip ahead, but hey, if you're here for lore, you know you're here for lore. Yeah. All right. So here's a vi video you guys will probably want to check out. Uh, check out if you're skipping it over because you want to see see in full audio, then that's okay too. But um, I will leave a link to the description below. Well, to this channel, the Crow's Nest, uh, for more information. But here we go. Yo, welcome back to the Crow's Nest, your home for Sea of Thieves. My name is Jay, and today we're going over a potential murder mystery in the making. Who is the target? DeMarco and Lissetti Singh, the two faces of the Sea Dogs Trading Company. But hold on a second, Jay. What are you talking about? Let's review and catch you up to speed. A few patches back, if you head up to the Sea Dog Tavern in adventure mode, located roughly in the middle of the map, and make your way to the top of the tavern, you'll find someone's secret hideout. And they make no attempt at hiding their intentions. Daggers are found protruding out of the portraits of the Singh siblings. But who would hate these two? so, so much. Theoretically speaking, it turns out you don't have to look too far. Near the base of the same ladder that you came up, you'll find this lovely lady, Amaranta. She doesn't hold back her feelings towards the siblings or the sea dogs. Before we go any further, pay attention to her face. More on this in just a bit. Amaranta makes it very clear she dislikes the pair and wants to reshape and rebrand the sea dogs with her own vision recruiting individuals for her cause to help take over the trade company. It's quite the operation to put together, so where can she find recruits? Let's take a look at today's patch, the introduction of Dark Relics. These dangerous relics have been stolen recently, and the powers they possess can be used in unholy rituals. Sounds like something that could be put to use if you were trying to get rid of siblings or even an entire trading company. But surely, Amaranta isn't stashing these Dark Relics right above the Sea Dog Tavern. No, that would be way too obvious. But what if she was stashing them nearby, still within striking distance? If we head on over to the Uncharted Island at I-13, just a few clicks over from the Sea Dog Tavern, a familiar spot we visited a few videos ago comes to mind. Remember this strange stone foundation? This looked to be the base of some sort of structure or dig site. And as of today's patch, look at what's happened here. Someone has been busy. Broken shovels, raised wooden platform, and two odd items. Take a closer look at this mask. Remind you of anyone? What a curious spot for a beauty mark. I know of someone with one in that exact same spot. Even Amaranta's facial shape matches the mask. Take a look at the scar, cut perfectly down where her hair parts. But is that enough proof, enough evidence to say it's her? Today's update introduces Reaper's chests, and just off to the side of the mask, we have one of the Reaper chests open. A closer look inside are the remains of someone and an interesting piece of cloth. Cloth that very heavily resembles the Sea Dog robes. What if Amaranta is trying to dig for someone or something to help take down the Sea Dogs? What if she wears this mask as a cover for her theft of stealing these dark relics? What if these same dark relics, with their unstable and dangerous powers, can be turned against DeMarco and Lissetti? These are questions we have to ask. I can't think of anyone who would love to see the siblings toppled more than Amaranta. But it won't be such an easy task, unless... Unless you have the right kind of help. The right kind of weapon on your side. I think we need to start paying much closer attention to the happenings on this island, as well as any other shady characters who might be plotting right under our very noses. If these kinds of dark relics fall into the wrong hands, anything is possible. Interesting. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right. Well, that's uh, pretty much it for the videos. Yeah. So, uh, real quick, though, I will say that is an interesting mystery. History. I'll have to keep an eye. Uh, uh, keep an eye uh, for any more hints. Hints. I have a good feeling that this is just a start. Start of a big update. I have a feeling we're going to find out more information, information come XO19. Or they didn't even mention the name of September's update yet, so you never know. Exactly. So there's potential. But, yeah. Uh, but, again, there is as mysterious as can be, so we don't know what it is. It's one of those two, either next month or XO, so it's got to be one of those announcements. Uh, but, yeah. Anyways, okay, so, as you see here, this is the Doc Relics page that you can go and take a look at all the cool new stuff. Um, and here's a good look at the cosmetics that you can get. So, as they said, uh, you can get, get some new time little cosmetics for the cannons. Uh, the anchor pole thing, I forgot what they said. And, uh, a new wheel. Wheel. No new sale, though? Oh, come on, man. Mm hmm Um, and obviously, rope, uh, they put here, rope, 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 your boat. <laughs> yeah. So, um, by the way, uh, this mercenary stuff, uh, for the mercenary set, this is the last, and I mean absolute last of the mercenary set, so, uh, could this be a comeback for exclusive stuff like back in the game's early days? Remember those times? Like, this were good, you know? Maybe. Maybe. But we don't know. So, yeah. take a, If you want to take a look at the rest of Doc Lux, you can take a look at this page. But now, it's time to look at the patch notes. And my, yes. oh my, do we have a lot to go over. Now, obviously, I don't think we're going to do some rinse and repeating about uh, the Doc Relic stuff, because you guys have already, we've already talked about it in huge detail. So, uh, I'm just going to leave it on a page for a couple sec seconds here, so you guys can feel free to pause. Uh, I'll move my mouse out of the way. All right. So now we're gonna look look at the actual updates. So um, that they made to the game. Uh, so, for example, they added, they increased the, uh, they worked on the melee and hit detection range hit detection. So. It, it's going to be much more responsive, and when toggling a level player or skeleton, uh, the hit should be more consistent and damage applied as expected. Uh, Alright, so that's a lot of stuff, guys. That means a lot, especially when it comes down to Arena. That was especially a problem, um, I'm sure, even for like player against player. Uh, not for ships, I'm just saying, uh, close up. Like, you want to be sure you got that hit. Like, that was an actual, confirmed, official hit. Yep. So, definitely want to make sure you do that. Uh, and, of course, the hit detection has been made across the game, including ship-to-ship, ship-to-water, and water-to-water player occurrences. A robot with a harpoon, as we talked about earlier. Um, now, the ba uh, barrels are plentiful, this, it, it talks about what you can find inside of these. Uh, you'll find skeletons, artifacts, obviously treasure chests, merchant crates, memory gems, messages in bottles, and even gunpowder power clegs. So, yeah, interesting. Free loot. <laughs> yep, free loot, basically. 
again, though, be careful, careful, because looks can be deceiving. It may look like a, a chest and stuff on the outside, but for all you know, it could be a gunpowder barrel. So watch what button you press, guys. Yes. Oh, this is nice. Uh, now we can uh, harpoon meat onto our ship now, which is cool. Yes. I mean, you look back in history. I mean, that's what harpoons did. They would latch on to meat. Anyway, so. Yeah. Now you can uh, like do that. And now you can also harpoon gun caliber, uh, gunpowder bear kegs. Not sure that one's going to work without out of it, them exploding, but... Um, actually, uh, yeah. I don't know why they flopped this around, but it's good, in a way. Uh, they had it the other way in the first place, I assume for competitive reasons. Uh, but now we can, uh, harpoon them no problem, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah. But that, that makes no sense now, you know? Yeah, because the, when you touch a gunpowder barrel, no matter what what it happens, if you touch it directly on contact, it's going to explode. Unless you detonate it yourself, of course. Yeah, so what made you decide to reverse that for harpoons? I, I have no clue. I'm not going to make any judgments on Leo's part, but that just seems a little weird. Again, we'll have to test this in game and see, so don't take our word on it. Now, for two of the tall tales here uh, Legendary Storyteller and Fates of the Morning Star, one of the earlier ones, they have added new island setups and puzzle variations. Legendary a storyteller has new puzzle variations, and the Fate of the Morning Star has a brand new island setup for a more varied experience during each playthrough. So, just a heads up on that. Mm hmm. Obviously. And, and I'm sure everyone was waiting for this the arena matchmaking improvements. Yes. So, um, now players will be prioritized to load into a cabin, land, and wait to start for an active contest. Uh, this will assure that contest start more quickly and come close to our full clue and player count while assuring players start contest to, at the beginning to maximize the chance of competing. Yeah, that is a big important one, so... Yeah, but where's the stuff where they say system for quitting, you know? Hmm. That's what I want to see. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. that I'm pretty sure it's farther below. Um, obviously, they talked about configuring the look and the response curve. I'm not into that. I'm pretty sure we're always not into it. Uh, so, you have to test it for yourself and take the whale's word on it, guys. Uh, they've improved the muting, obviously. The settings remain unchanged, but all players in the arena can do it. Yeah, why? Why? And I, yeah. And this one, long time coming, gang. Replace gamer tags with, uh, yeah, with kind of different names. I'm not sure how that one's going to work. And now you can hide gamer tags. So Another I long time coming. Yeah, yeah, but honestly, if you're one of the streamers, streamers, unless you really don't want people jumping on you, would you really hide your gamer tag? Again, why do you think I just said long time coming? I'm, that's why I'm so mad about it. Yeah. Like... Both of these, they should have done in the first place. I know, but there will be there. <laughs> Got to be living the working on battle tools on top of this. So, <laughs> uh, now they have a king. Now you can assign a king binding for hiding non-gamer crew gamer tags. Uh, so that will help you hide the tags of your rival players. Shut up. There should be a key binding for that hiding clue tags too, but I'm not gonna make it debate there, there right now. <laughs> I'm just happy. Yeah, honestly, uh, there should be boss keys for everything. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, they are, and they up the audio audio experience overall. 
nah, I really don't think we're gonna make it's gonna make that much of a difference, but okay. I mean, yeah, all you have is okay as is. Uh unless you mean by the glitching. Uh I know that's a thing. Uh. Yep. Okay, now on to the game balance pa patches. Now this is where they're gonna go into a little bit more detail about this. Uh, so, Stronghold Clex, Pilot Legends will now incur the threat of a Lumbling Skeleton wielding a Devil Stadium Stronghold Clex while tackling a Pilot Legend Voyage. So, be prepared to run. You think we're not already prepared? Um, sorry, I wasn't hearing you. Someone messaged me. Um, so what'd you say? I'm sorry. Uh, I said, Straw Pilot Legends will now occur the threat of a Lumbling Skeleton wielding a Devil Stadium Stronghold Clegg while tackling a Pilot Legend Voyage. So be prepared to run! Like we aren't already! <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Skeleton Lord Ability Chaining. Skeleton Lords that occurred during Tall Tales will now be able to use their abilities and sequences to aid them in combat. Uh oh, that won't be helpful. For and to put an example, a skeleton lord can now indicate a knockback and summoning reinforces or teleport to a new location or both before players can recover. Uh, well, that's just dandy. Hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, Gunpowder Bill's spawn speed has been reduced while players are out exploring islands. Again! Thank you, there, there. but seriously, that should have been, been, uh, should have been a patch by in the second, second big update. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not, uh, okay, so... Emerging uh, skeletons while freely exploring the world and under outside the constraints of a uh, voyage. The difficulty of emerging skeletons have been reduced to ensure newer players have a safer time exploring. Huh. Interesting. Uh, skeleton difficulty across higher ranks. On higher rank voyages, skeleton uh, clues will occur. Fewer skeletons with large health pools and instead face off against more skeletons in ways, reducing the frustration of those longer, more drawn skelet out skeleton occurs. Ugh, that's a good thing to hear. Um, and finally, uh, sl when sailing a sloop storm in a sloop, the storm's effects of handling the sloop has been reduced and the sloop's wheel will be pulled less aggressively. Now, for those who don't know, well, tip, when you occur a storm inside of Sea Thieves, your ship will be pulled left and right, just like it does in real life. So, be prepared. But this, when you're exploring on the sloop just by yourself or with a friend, this will make it pull less aggressively, so, yeah. Yeah, just a heads up if you've been frustrated about that, that's... A little less frustrating for you now. Okay, so, yeah. so we have some fixed issues. I'll just go over over the jet. I won't go over the generals, but I'll leave them up on screen for a few seconds so you guys can take a look. Five. Time. Okay, now these are Mina ones. These are probably a little bit more points, so I'll go over these. It's no longer possible to harpoon players that are already killed in the arena. Hmm. Mm hmm. Uh. Uh, taking damage while sailing, uh, uh, players will be removed from the tavern cannon when merging to a new server. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, the, uh, taking damage when uh, the sailing into the devil shroud will no longer cause the screen, screen to flash occasionally. The glorious sea dog's shovel now has to collect divine effects. And... 
Ship Lively's no longer display graphical issues outside on the outside of the sloop, sloop's hall. Well, that's good to hear. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm very sorry if I'm not paying attention. I'm just talking to that person. Oh, okay, that's totally, totally cool. Oh, that's totally cool. Uh, now, Tall Tales uh, sh shows the gold. This ha there's been a couple of adjustments. Quest books have been rearranged to support better non-language uh, English languages and prevent ta te uh, text overlapping. Mm, that's a big improvement. This is for the legendary storyteller and the wild Ro uh, wild rose uh, tall tales. Uh, Revenge of the Morning Star text uh, quest book text has been improved to resolve issues when localizing to other languages. Shores of Gold, the Shroud of Breaker now plays the effect, uh, the appropriate effects when breaking through the Devil's Shroud, and Stars of the Thief when placing the star gems in the statue to retreat the totem. Leaving the area and returning will no longer cost the statue and the uh, statue to close and the totem to be lost. Now there's one that needs to be fixed. Mm hmm. All right, and last one are the environments. I'm not going to go over all... Oh, sorry, that was Jade <laughs> laughing. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, our Devil Lord geysers will no longer abrupt from wooden platforms. Please! Finally there. Seriously. I'll let you lead the rest of them, rest of them yourself here. Five... Four, three, two, three. Time. Hmm? Oh. You're fine. Okay. Uh, gunpowder, gunpowder clegg hit detection. One improvements. Uh, uh, these are known issues, by the way. And telltale uh, accommodation showing as incomplete. Now that's a big issue. Alright, and now finally, last but not least, the download size for this. So for Xbox S and original users, it will be 4.47 gigabytes. Uh, for, uh, for Xbox One X and Windows 10 users, it will be 6.44 gigabytes. So something to keep in mind. Uh, and that's it for... Basically, um, every, uh, everything CFEs today uh, in terms of official. So, Law, you have any community updates for us? Um, yes. Um, okay, there is some politics uh, for us. Apparently, uh, our group is going under some background innovation, renovation, whatever you want to call it. And um, let's see, today is uh, Wednesday, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yes. So this weekend is, uh, the, uh, remind you guys again, this Saturday is the first official weekend for Race of Legends. So um, it's now, like, registration is now closed. You can't go in there. However, I'm sure if you ask Doug, we'll probably say, yeah, registration is open for next week. However, I have zero idea. You have to ask him. Yeah. So if you guys are looking, uh, just a reminder for all competitors, this weekend is the first race of Legends race. So, yeah, just don't be sure not to forget. <laughs> yeah, practice, practice, practice. Those of you that are out there, I love you. We love you. Some yeah. of you out there, we love you. Yeah. Do good. Yeah, do, do a good job, guys. Make us proud. Uh, oh, oh, MC, we forgot to mention our new uh, individual CFE's member joining us. Uh, I got to talk to you about that in private, private first, uh, Lola. I just talked to her uh, last night. I just talked to her last night. So uh, we, before we can officially announce it, we got to talk in the back. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll edit in yeah. something. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, so, um, anything else? Um, not that I can think of other than, um, a sisterhood fleet gang maid. Um, the, the all girls group being a thing. So. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Okay, that's all for now, guys. Um, like, like always, please like, subscribe, and follow us. Uh, follow us on Twitter, YouTube, YouTube, uh, 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 and all oh, those other social media platforms down the link. It links in below. Um, if you are new to the channel, again, my name is Music Clues. Laura is our leader of the Go Gamers and local CFEs fan. Hardcore, mm -hmm. by the way. So, so do, be prepared for a fight if you want to face Oh, by the way, are we doing that Dark Relics tonight? Uh, well, of course we are. Alright, I just, I posted a PlayStation and a uh, Switch test. You really think we wouldn't do an Xbox test? Shh. Fair work. Okay, see if these is harsh on gamer cards. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Yo, it will work. Work. I have a good feeling. Uh, but, yeah. So, uh, definitely look forward to a Doc Relics tonight. Night. We're going to get some gameplay up for that, too. Uh, if you guys didn't see my previous test, I did uh, post one for Super Smash Bros. showing off the Heal DLC, me facing against it, and I showed off Poison just a couple hours ago, showing off some gameplay for that as well for Street Fighter V. So, yeah. And it, I also obviously posted my unboxing of this new capture card, which is the Aviat Media... Uh, live game of Portable 2 plus man that's a mouthful <laughs> so be sure to check that out and also just a little adjustment to the main homepage of uh, the Go Gamers channel I did add some new playlists playlists to make it look a little bit neater and I am working on a brand new banner for the channel so just adds up uh, but yeah just made some tiny adjustments to make the Go Gamers look a little bit more clean so, yeah, be sure to take a look, look at the front page and uh, like, subscribe, like I said. All right, that's all for now. This is yours truly, DJ Music Clues. And Lula signing off. And uh, we'll, we'll see you on the seas. Cheers. Yes. Yep. Bye, guys.